The Post on Church Point Road in Gonzales would like to invite everyone to their newly renovated events hall, a beautiful 9,600 square foot facility that features a 5,500 square foot main hall and a separate 600 square foot conference room. Renters have access to our huge kitchen, large stage, tables, chairs, bar, and covered outdoor cooking. So plan your next wedding, party, conference, and more at The Post on Church Point Road in Gonzales. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. You could be driving. Happy Honda Days are back for the most wonderful time of the year at Team Honda. The savings are high on every new Honda. And with our Buy Here, Sell Here program, you'll get top value for your trade. Happy Honda Days from Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. the feeling Hello and welcome as we start today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here's hoping all is well with you and yours in your world since the last opportunity we had to spend a little time with you and yours roughly some 24 hours ago. We start today's show with Louisiana news and our condolences to the Hawley family and the family of first responders in our state. For those of you whose life experience does not include a close and or regular interaction with the first responder family. You may not be aware of just how close this group of individuals happens to be. Those who rush in where everyone else rushes out deserve our deepest respect. They do law enforcement officers, firemen, paramedics, et cetera, et cetera. They do the things that on our best day, mere mortals like you and I don't possess the fortitude to carry out. I mean, the things that these guys and girls willingly subject themselves to most of us mere mortals on our best day couldn't do it. I had the, uh, what's, what's, what's the most appropriate word, for lack of a better word, experience once in my life of running into a burning house to try and save the occupants in that house. And... I will be the first to tell you, I did it on a whim. I did it because despite the danger to myself and the guy that was my mechanic at the time, we both rushed headlong into a burning house. I did it because I was thinking if this were my mother, my sister, a relative in that home, I would want someone to go in and try to save them. After it was over, I'm talking with the first responders there, and I made no bones about telling them, I've got a renewed respect for what you guys and girls do. Had I taken the time to think what I was doing, 
I might not have done it. I, 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 I don't mind telling you the flat out God honest truth. If I would have had time to think about it, I don't know if I would have actually been able to pull that off. But these guys and girls do it every single day. By all accounts, the gentleman at the controls of the helicopter that crashed on the spillway, Joshua Hawley, was a guy that dedicated his life to serving other people. And it's, it's times like these where we really get a sincere appreciation for what these guys and girls do. I mean, to willingly put yourself in harm's way. <laughs> and, and, and if that weren't bad enough, to do it while being underpaid and underappreciated adds an entirely new layer of gratitude for me to the men and women that do what they do. By the way, the Department of Transportation and Development had originally scheduled for yesterday closing I-10 over the spillway to repair the power lines that were damaged uh, when Joshua Hawley's helicopter went down. They have since changed that. Talking with floor producer extraordinaire Mighty earlier this morning, uh, he, he posed the question, I thought they, didn't they fix that yesterday? So immediately I went to DOTD's website and that was the plan initially, was to repair the power lines yesterday, Wednesday. They've now decided that it will be Sunday. Unfortunately, I don't have an exact time that I can give you. DOTD says that the time has not been determined, but there will be a, quote, public notification made ahead of time. I say all that to say, if your travels this weekend or the travels of someone you know, particularly those of you that are expecting people from out of town, uh, encompasses that stretch of I-10, stay abreast of all the latest developments. Uh, DOTD is pretty good on their website about giving us the heads up regarding closures and changes and detours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're planning on traveling on Sunday down I-10, go to DOTD's website and uh, they'll give you all the pertinent information that you need there. And for those of you that are members of the community of faith, I don't know anyone in the Hawley family personally, but I've got to imagine that they would not mind in the least if you were to be so kind as to keep them in both your thoughts and in your prayers. Speaking of Louisiana news. I, I told you all when this story broke that in no way, shape, or form had we seen the last of it. it it's probably going to end up in the courts. God knows how far into the process it will go. Only time will tell. But Governor John Bell Edwards confirming this week that he will in fact not go along with the recommendations from the House Health and Welfare Committee that he not add COVID-19 to the list of vaccinations required to attend public schools in Louisiana for those 16 years and up. The governor saying that we have more leeway as far as opting out is concerned. Uh, more so than maybe any other state in the union. Parents have the right to object on uh, religious grounds, on moral grounds, whatever. As long as they fill out the objection form, send it in, there is no, quote, mandate. Here's the problem I have with that. If there are that many avenues to quote opt out um, 
it, uh, it, it just occurred to me, and I am going to hold this over his head uh, probably for, I don't know, something like forever, Marty. It, it, it just occurred to me as I happened to look up and sneak a peek at one of the monitors, and I think Katie's probably trying to tell him the same thing. You got the wrong background up, bruh. <laughs> oh, it switched on its own? Well, good thing I'm a Jaguar fan. <laughs> good thing I'm a Jaguar fan. Marty, Marty will take care of that during the break. Uh, Technology is a wonderful thing until it breaks. Just... <laughs> Just on its own, it decided, you know what? It's got a mind of its own. That darn thing just decided, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I know about them black conservatives. I don't feel like watching him this morning. So let's put on some, just put on some football. We'll, we'll, we'll straighten all of that out during the break. But, but, but again, here, here's the problem I have. With Governor John Bell Edwards going against the wishes of the people, in this instance, legislators voted a certain way based upon the wishes of their constituency. Our legislators are our voice. The governor, as the chief executive officer of the state, is in no way, shape, or form obligated to observe the wishes of the people but here's the problem for me. If you have all these various ways of opting out as, quote, widely available as the COVID-19 shots are, then simply leave it to the parents to decide whether or not they want their kids to get it. If you have all these various ways to, quote, opt out. Why add another layer of bureaucracy, another layer of things parents have to do for their child's education, fill out the aforementioned objection form? Why punish them to have to go through all of this when the simple fact of the matter is the shots are widely available. If you believe in it and want your child to have it, then go get it. Don't inconvenience everybody else. Don't add more government bureaucracy and control to something that we already despise. And on top of that, the people have made their wishes known to their elected representatives. Now, listen, I get it. <laughs> Been doing this a mighty long time, y'all. I understand, particularly with liberals. They're of the opinion they know better than everybody else. They know how to take care of you better than everybody else. And they know what's best for you over everybody else, including yourself. It's just another hindrance that doesn't need to exist. The shots are widely available. You want one? Go get one. But leave everybody else alone. That's what happens when you're conservative. Darn common sense gets in the way every time. First break of today's show. We'll get the background fixed, courtesy of Marty, when we come back on today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. 
Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back to today's edition of the, what show is it? Right, what, you <laughs> what you want it to be. <laughs> what you want it to be. <laughs> Our uh, crack <laughs> staff, <laughs> and I use that term loosely. No, just kidding, y'all, just kidding. Uh, taking care of business during the break. Got the right background up now. Everybody's happy, happy, happy. That's the way it works. Unfortunately, all across this country, though, all kidding aside, things are not happy, happy, happy. Nowhere near as much as they could be, particularly as it pertains to crime. Things have gotten so bad in this country that conventional wisdom says there has to be something else at work here. Meaning, people don't just behave like this unless, of course, they feel there are no consequences to their actions or they feel that government really doesn't care what they do one way or another. Or there's some other agenda at work here. It's as though, particularly with the left, they come up with more and more egregious ways to engage in crime. You know, the phenomenon of drive-by shootings is something that is plaguing our country and destroying the quality of life of millions of people. And this week in Baytown, Texas, suburb of Houston, a couple weeks after a young man was murdered, his family decided to hold a vigil for peace in their community. So, you already know where this is going, particularly if you hadn't even heard the story yet, you know where it's going. Car pulls up, occupants in the car, at a vigil for peace, and opens fire. 20-year-old female, dead, 13 people wounded, including a pastor and his wife. Now, you don't 
have to be the best researcher on the planet to know that homicide and crime is exploding all across the country despite what, speaking of using terms extremely loosely, the illustrious Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will tell you. Despite what she says, crime in America is real, y'all. In, in her words, and I'll paraphrase, let's not all get caught up in the hysteria that the media is trying to ferment about crime being out of control. At least a dozen major cities in this country and keep in mind, we've still got another two weeks and change to go in the year. At least a dozen major cities <laughs> have broken all-time homicide records this year. Many of whom, by the way, Baton Rouge included, set new records just a year ago. Let me show you just how bad this is getting. The mayor of San Francisco this week announcing enough of this BS and she ain't say BS y'all. She <laughs> she she put it on, on on display for the whole world to see. Of course, this is the same mayor that voted earlier this year to defund the police to the tune of $120 million. And now, all of a sudden, she's concerned about crime. Of course, now, if you've been watching the news at all, you know in San Francisco and California in general, smash and grabs have become the new phenomenon where carloads of people pull up, jump out, run in the store, wreak havoc, steal as much merchandise as possible, jump in the car, take off. Now, all of a sudden, and, and I didn't think it just occurred to me just now. I don't know if she's up for re-election or not. But it sounds like, and, and listen, if she's truly had an awakening, God bless her. If she truly has now seen firsthand and understands what's going on in Democrat-run cities all across America, and she has decided, I took an oath, and I can't just let this go unabated, then God bless her if she's come to that realization. But politicians being who politicians are and doing what they do, I'm tempted to check and find out when the next election is. For her to, to take a stand like this in direct contradiction to the narrative of the left. Don't be surprised if they come for her real soon. Meanwhile, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, speaking of the granola state, when quizzed about the explosion of crime, you know what her response was? I have no earthly clue where this comes from. Really? Huh. You and your party, in collusion with the mainstream media, be sure to add that, hammered the American citizenry incessantly, demonizing law enforcement and the systemic racism that it propagates. You hammered us incessantly with calls to defund the police. You engaged in bail reform where individuals that normally 
would have their criminally oriented behinds locked up, let out with no conditions whatsoever. I have to ask what, ask, what the hell did you think was going to happen? You know, call it a curse, if you will. It used to be looked at almost on the same level as a virtue. But common sense now has become something that apparently doesn't exist anymore. How many times have you heard me reference the movie Criminals Thrive on the Indulgence of Society? Some were wondering, however, huh, it's interesting that the mayor of San Francisco is now saying the reign of criminals that are destroying our city, it's time for it to come to an end. Some were wondering, huh, when it was just CVS and Walgreens, she didn't have this epiphany. But now that it's designer stores, the Louis Vuittons of the world, the Chanel's of the world, now all of a sudden, oh, the reign of the criminals has got to come to an end. Now, we will probably never, ever be privy to whether or not the mayor got a call from some Fortune 500 gurus saying, if you don't end this crap, we're taking our merchandise, our employees, our business, and our tax dollars someplace else. They'll never be honest enough to tell you that. But if I were a betting man, which I'm not, I'd take odds on that. Just goes to show you <laughs> what the left truly thinks of you. Of course, you already knew that. You can look around. You talk with your relatives, your former co-workers, your kids that live in various cities all around the country. And they're talking about how horrible crime has become. But AOC tells you, ah, oh, don't get caught up in the hysteria. Nancy Pelosi tells you, I had no idea why people are acting this way. And yet, they continue the same policies that brought us to where we are now. As sad as that is, what may be sadder still, <laughs> some of y'all going to still vote Democrat. Just an observation. Bottom of the hour break. I love it when I'm right. But this is something I hadn't thought about. Stick around. I'll share it with you when we come back on today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Only on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com You've waited and now Toyota Fawn is here at Team Toyota. Every new Toyota is on sale with end of year savings. And with our buy here, sell here program, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade. The selection and savings are right here for you at Team Toyota. I-12 at O'Neill. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. 
Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to today's edition of the Fire Spud Show. I um, spent some time yesterday and the day before, as a matter of fact, talking about the uh, Jesse Smollett fake hate crime episode and how the jury saw through this farce. And I mentioned at the time how I would like to see first and foremost two things. One, apologies being issued from Justice Smollett to a wide range of people. The African American community, the LGBT Q plus community, conservative America, and America in general. I also would like to see, even if it's just a matter of days, lock this guy up and send a message that this sort of thing will not be tolerated in this country. The Boy that cried wolf syndrome is the first thing that comes to mind. But last night I run across this story of a black pastor in Chicago. Corey Brooks, Pastor Corey Brooks. In an interview said that, you know what? I'm glad Jussie Smollett got caught in his lie. Now, that may sound a little strange coming from a pastor. I'm glad he got caught in that lie. But after reading further, it made me think about something that I had not entertained, because I had not entertained up until that point. Listen to what this pastor said. Quote, I'm glad he got caught in his lie. Race is not the greatest problem that we face in America. The greatest problem that we face in America is just learning how to be more neighborly. He goes on to say, quote, the racist homophobic attack on Jussie Smollett is the far-right America's endgame. Wow. I wonder how they must feel now, talking about the media, that led us happily 
down the road to additional racial division. He continues, I wonder how they must feel now. After supporting a man who tried to racially divide all of America, supporting someone who was not trying to make America better, but was looking only at evil and trying to use things to divide us even further apart. Then he said, what really struck me. This pastor, Pastor Brooks, slammed Juicy for, quote, using the race card of all things. Quote, in Chicago, where we have so much stuff going on, with all the violence, with all the shooting, you do realize Chicago is closing in potentially on 1,000 murders in one year in one city. But he continues, Justice Smollett comes to our city and uses the race card to divide us, not to help us deal with the issues that we're faced with, not to help us deal with the violence that we're dealing with every single day, but uses the race card to further divide us as an American people. I made the comment to a couple of members of the crew this morning. <coughs> I forget exactly what it was we were talking about. But I said, kind of flippantly, let me show you how the left thinks. These two guys that I was having the conversation with, both of them just burst out laughing. <laughs> You said liberals and think in the same sentence. <laughs> There's an oxymoron for you. <laughs> Here's a guy that is attempting to play the race card to divide us even further in a city where black folks' blood is flowing like a river in gutters. This guy, like the mainstream media and the politicians, Democrats, that tried to shove us down this road of enlightenment and inclusivity and diversity, this clown comes to a city where black folks are dying in record numbers. Not to help heal, not to bring us together, but to play the freaking race card in an attempt to divide us even further. You know, it occurred to me a couple of days after the verdict was announced. Had this idiot not been so freaking stupid, he might have gotten away with it. If this clown were not as stupid as he is, thinking, well, people might wonder if it's 20 below and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, who the hell goes walking to Subway? If he were not so stupid to think, well, as offensive as a noose is to black people, when the police come to interview me about it, 
the last thing that, are, that, that any self-respecting, conscious, thinking person, particularly a person of color is going to do, is leave the freaking thing on or put it back on to show the po-po. If he were not so freaking stupid, he might have gotten away with it. And where would we be then? That's rhetorical. <laughs> Don't answer. We all know the answer already. The mainstream media, Democrats, progressives, liberals would have ridden this horse until it died of exhaustion. You see, we told you it's systemic. You see, it's ingrained in the evil racist country. They would have ridden this puppy until it collapsed, frothing at the mouth, all for who's in the air, and died. Had he not been such a freaking doofus. Now. I would like to think. <laughs> don't have a whole lot of faith. But I would like to think. That for those of y'all that bought into this horse crap. The next time something like this happens. And rest assured. It's going to happen again. Rest assured. In an ideal world, the left would say, huh, can't use that one anymore. I mean, look how it turned out for old Juicy. Look how it turned out. Look what people think about him. I'm not going to do anything like that. In an ideal world, that's what would happen. But as we all know, the world is not ideal. Rest assured, there's going to be another case. I just hope. <laughs> Y'all accept this in the spirit that it's given. The next time it happens, I hope between now and then, if you are white and you don't have any black friends, I'm hoping between now and then you will develop friendships with some black people. That way, you won't get suckered like you did this time. See, black folk knew. Ask Dave Chappelle. Ask, uh, what, 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 what's the guy, a little short black guy, Marty, comedian? Um, Kevin Hart. Ask Kevin Hart. They'll tell you, bro, we knew this was we knew this was bogus up front. Had y'all thought to ask us what we think instead of trying to make us think the way you want us to think, you could have figured it out, too. But instead. The entire country. Ends up. Being drugged down a road. That none of us wanted. None of us had anything to do with. And ultimately had no benefit to America. Huh. Far be it for me to disagree with this black pastor. I'm glad he got caught in his lie too. Because at the end of the day. Like most good Democrats. If they lie to you about this. <laughs> what else will they lie to you about? Just a question. Just a question. Final break of today's show. We'll get it done. Come back, put that big old pretty bow on this puppy, and we wrap up. Today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. 
For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. The Post on Church Point Road in Gonzales would like to invite everyone to their newly renovated events hall, a beautiful 9,600 square foot facility that features a 5,500 square foot main hall and a separate 600 square foot conference room. Renters have access to our huge kitchen, large stage, tables, chairs, bar, and covered outdoor cooking. So plan your next wedding, party, conference, and more at The Post on Church Point Road, Gonzales. Tremontes has meat. Tremontes has seafood. Tremontes has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontes.com. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Welcome back for the final segment of today's edition of the Clarence Buck Show. Um, we would be remiss in our duties if we did not acknowledge the number of our young people yesterday that signed for National Early Signing Day. It is uh, for many families the pre ushering in of the next phase in life for their children. Leaving the ranks of high school, entering young adulthood, and looking to, quote, make their way in this world. For many of these families, it will be the first time that a member of their immediate family has been enrolled in an institution of higher learning. I, um, I, I understand full well that my life experience as a man of color in, in many instances is not, quote, typical. I was so blessed, so very fortunate that God blessed me with two parents that not only understood the value of education, but instilled that within all of their children at a very early age. So while many of us on the outside looking in will look at the early signing period strictly in terms of athletic endeavors, it's a whole lot bigger than that in the grand scheme of things. I can only hope that every single one of these young men will make it a point 
to make the most of this opportunity, not in the, quote, athletic vein. Fact of the matter is, when you look at the number of players that will play professional football, the odds are stacked against the overwhelming majority of kids that signed the national letter of intent this week. That's just being brutally honest about what it is. My sincere hope is that the parents and the students will understand that you have an opportunity here to change your life. I mean, at the end of the day, all the blood, sweat, tears that you leave out there on that football field. That's one thing. Finally make it to the NFL. That's another thing. Sign the contract. Pull your phone out. Pull up your, phone, your, your, your bank balance on the phone. Yeah, it's real. Says there, $5 million. But all of that, y'all, as you well know, this is no earth-shaking revelation here. All of that can come to an end just like that. Many times, from something that completely is unrelated to football, unrelated to athletics, just ask Henry Ruggs. He'll tell you. My point is this, y'all. One, savor the opportunity. Two, make the most of the opportunity. Because even if you are that very, very small, almost minuscule number of individuals that will make it to the NFL, that's not going to last forever. And at some point, when your playing career comes to an end, it will then be time for you, hopefully, to assume your role as a productive member of society. We, and maybe it's just a part of being human. I don't know. It, it, it's for a brighter mind than mine to, to, uh, to come to a conclusion on this. But maybe it's a part of being human that all we want to look at is the big shiny, I call it. The big shiny is great. Nothing wrong with that. The media, entertainment industry, corporate America, all try to get us geared toward the big shiny. House, car, clothes, jewelry, whatever the big shiny is at the moment. But when all is said and done, being able to put your kids in a position where they can become responsible adults, raise responsible children, that's the end result. I don't have any numbers in front of me to quantify it one way or another. But I would take odds that a good parent would have a certain level of pride and accomplishment over their son, or, uh, over their son making it to the National Football League. But I would also venture a guess they're going to have a whole lot more pride when that son, if he leaves early for the NFL, goes back and earns that college degree. When that young man takes a wife, not a husband, a wife, and they have children, and those children then become the second generation of college educated family members. 
I could be totally off base, y'all. I have been wrong before in life. God knows I will be wrong again before he calls me home. But I don't think, it's, I don't think I'm wrong this time. The majority of parents, and if you don't see it this way, then maybe you're the problem. The majority of parents will get a whole lot more gratitude out of their kids becoming productive members of society than playing in the NFL. Just saying. So, young men, tip of the hat to you. Congratulations on ushering in the next phase of life. Congratulations on having developed your talent given to you by God to a level where most of us can't begin to fathom. But parents, just like voting, leave it to Clarence to tie something like this into voting, but it's true. Parents, your job is just beginning. I know you've nurtured them. I know you trained them. I know you sacrificed for them. Now they're in college. We're empty nesters. They're out of the house. All we got to worry about is can I get a rental car and a plane ticket to fly where they're playing next week. But your job is just starting. Lest we forget, they didn't ask to come here, y'all. We brought them here. And as a result, there is a responsibility every single day day we owe them and y'all should understand that because in today's society what we've become in America everybody's owed something you know democrat philosophy nobody's ever responsible for anything everybody owes everybody something well in this case you owe your children I just hope that when their playing days are over that you will be in the enviable position of having them come to you and say, Mom, Dad, thank you. For most of us, they don't have to go any further. We know what they're talking about. If not, well, you still got time. Start working today. You'll be amazed at how good it makes you feel. My time's up, y'all, and I got to go. But this day, just like any other, maybe more so than most, I give it to you. You know what? You're right. America, we ain't perfect. But for this old boy's money, <laughs> it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do, too. Then again, it really doesn't matter because... There ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Love you much. God bless.